Welcome to Center of Light, all you sexy, beautiful human beings. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. That includes you two guys. You got to come off that buck strong energy sometime and fall into your feminine sensitivity. Kind of get with the new program. What is that new program? The Dalai Lama himself says the Western woman is who is going to save the world. I don't know for sure if he means a particular female as a savior, meaning someone in the seat of power that's going to have such an amazing spiritual divine influence that the world is going to follow her lead, savior. See how it fits? Or if it's the model of the Western woman. So we got to kind of move, not got to kind of, not got to kind of, we got to move into this sweet space within all of us. Tonight's presentation is titled, I Don't Believe. What could Keith possibly mean with I don't believe? I tell you what. The title is I don't believe. It's a one word title that I'm looking for. Answer. If you come up with that word, <laughs> I'll give you some free time with me. I'll give you a reading, a one on one session. Okay? How's that? Think about Keith, what he does with his titles. Think about Keith and his goofing. First person who populates in my feed. Welcome to the center of light, all my friends. It's good to see you. Happy Mother's Day to you, sincerely. If your mother's with you, God bless you. If your mother is on the other side, God bless you. Are you living in mother energy to where you feel no disconnect from the one who truly ruled the roost? <laughs> It's mom. Mom is the heart of the love machine. There you have it, Nori Love. Love machine. Nori Love machine. Speaking of Nori Love machine, next Sunday, I believe. It's next Sunday. Let me find my announcement. Next Sunday, Nori Love machine. So that would be Yanava, Y-N-V, and... NLM, we're doing a collaboration retreat. 
Sunday, May 19th, 5 to 9 p.m. Eastern, 4 to 8 p.m. Central. Nori and I is going to do a forgiveness freedom retreat for our event. For more information about that, email obligation free love and light filled details at everything conscious at gmail.com. That's the word everything conscious c o n s c i o u s at gmail.com. We're going to forgive all those little hurts inside that everyone has ever done to us. All of them. Or at least that's Nori and I's intent. If I can speak for Nori. What those monks are doing in the Himalayan caves. They're not going in there to relax, to meditate. Nori, you are welcome to fill out anything in this form about that event that experience next Sunday that you can drop in this feed, please do so. You never have to ever ask again, okay? What these God aspirants are doing is they're going inside of themselves while they're in these caves for year on year long is forgiving all the hurts, the hurts that they inflicted upon themselves, the hurts they inflicted upon others, the hurts that others inflicted upon them, and then the hurts that the others inflict upon themselves. This is going to be the image for this evening right here. I don't believe, I don't believe, but there's a door. And look at the architecture behind that door. If you have not learned or ever read of the story of the supposed reason the Taj supposed the reason the Taj Mahal Taj Mahal was built which is in India and India is considered the mother country of the world happy mother's day it's a doorway mother's day is the doorway mother's day is the doorway Meet me inside and let's play. Mother's Day. Also, I want to read to you. I'm going to write it down so I don't forget one moment. Let me put it on my notes to do. Actually, let's do it now. Right now. Let me find this image. One moment. Where would I find this image? Where would I find this image? Give me a second. It's deserving of my time, at least. Ah, I know where to find it. And the page takes some time to open up. <laughs> Here we go. From this divine man right here on Mother's Day. He's coming to Memphis really soon. I'm excited. You have no idea. This is like a kid in a candy store or a puppy dog who watches passersby in a shop. And that day he knows he's about to be bought. And that tail starts wagging. <laughs> Swamji is coming to Memphis, which I can't wait for. But this particular piece came to me from Anjana via the Swamji organization. I won't read it to you. It's gorgeous. About Mother's Day. Mother, rather, on Mother's Day. <clears throat> Divine blessings, <laughs> in his hands up. Divine blessings on the, the occasion of Mother's Day. Mother is the first guru for each and every every individual so first of all you must satisfy your mother and keep her happy showing gratitude for all that the mother has done and keeping her happy and satisfied is the duty of each and every person in reality every person has five mothers namely mother who gave birth motherland 
Mother Earth, Mother Universe, and Gomata. Keeping Mother Earth safe and happy is the only way for us to be safe and happy. To serve and worship the five mothers is the real worship of the Lord and will make this world an abode of peace. <laughs> wow! Do you notice the liquid fire that rolls out of such a divine being's heart, mouth? There is a fluidity there. There's something that is palpable, but not yet tangible in a physical context until you met Swamji yourself. Then we have the opportunity, which I have, and many of us in the Memphis region have had the opportunity to be in the physical proximity of grace when it walks and talks. It's amazing. Let me go through my gamut. Uh, I do want to invite everyone who is a part of my family and I yours and this Yanava tribe is that you please share with me in this open forum. I am always about being open. Or you can just send it to me in a personal Keith Blanchard inbox at Facebook. What you do like and want more of from myself via Center of Light or Center of Light Radio or what you would like to see less of. I like playing music. It gives me time to pause. I don't have to have the pause. I'm taking it at my liberty, which I should. But I do care about what you think. Do you like the musical segments? Do you like the Sadhguru or whatever videos I, I present? You would like more or less of, they're too long. Anything you would like to say because my life, my heart, my passion on this beautiful Mother's Day as I open up the Stargate the door because I don't believe but I'm open to receive I did ask earlier for those to give me your one opportunity chance to tell me what it is you think I don't believe think about Keith's personality how cray cray I am <laughs> see if you can hit it I will give you an 30, 45 minutes of my time, just hell, for reading, counseling, any questions you may ask, whatever it takes. Ricky says, I love the music. Everything sinks, makes everything sink in. Thank you, bro. Nori loves the music. Carlos Mendezabo, my bro. Carlos Mendezabo broke my collarbone, y'all, many years ago. I'm saying that to make him laugh, not to make him feel guilty. Because nobody made me dive at his feet when he was running with that football. <laughs> Angel spirit, hello. First order of business. Well, second order of business. Let's, in, let's uh, acknowledge everyone. Holly, Elwood, Lewis, Natalie, Nathan, Carolyn, John, Anita, Kelly, Kristen, Sana, Carl, Brenda, Robin, Fetter, Weiss, Gerber. Brenda, Angel spirit, Nori, love. The Vito's in the house. Big Daddy Rick. Ron Gotro. Rena. Judy Lee. Mary. Kathy. Carlos Mendezabo. I think I got everybody. Look at my, let me look at my notes. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> First thing before I close out this Mother's Day section. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to my mother. Jeanette Marie Domaine Blanchard. Her family was from the Dominican Republic. My mother. Thank you, Mom. She taught me lots. Much of it was sweet, very sweet. Lots of it was not so sweet. But in the end, 
in hindsight 2020 it is as sweet as it gets she taught me what I needed an amazing miracle surrounding my mother and a death going to South Louisiana at a time I was not supposed to go when I arrived there my mother passed away two hours after I arrived when I was told to go I got my car and left happy Mother's Day mom also those who are repeat offenders of Center of Light know that I've been dealing with a screen that goes dark at 9 o'clock. And I turned orange. Figured it out. And we're going we're gonna to prove that. And I'm just going to be correct. At the 9 o'clock tonight, at 9 o'clock tonight, my screen would go dark orange like it would be a blue light filter. Well, thinking it was my new TV all this time, I didn't think about my computer because whatever reasons this is what I found today and I turned it off <laughs> night light settings it was turned on look at it at 9 o'clock p.m. scheduled right scheduled night light I turned it off <laughs> so that darkness that dark screen nightmare is over Tonight, I am going to play a little bit. There's going to be spirit involved always. But I'm going to play. I'm going to talk about some of my favorite things. What we have done, I have done, spoken about, spirit has spoken about, you have spoken about, we have all come together about for about the last year and just over a year. But also some of my absolute favorite things. Right now, I want to make an announcement about an event that's going to take place September 21st and 22nd in Memphis, Tennessee at the Agri Center, Four Points Expo, Circle of Chi. It's a holistic event, $20 for two days, $15 for a single day. I'm going to be a keynote speaker, Larry Flaxman from Discovery Channel, Ancient Aliens is going to be a keynote speaker. Dr. Rita Louise is going to be a keynote speaker. Another powerful keynote speaker. Speakers are going to happen for both days all day long. You're going to find gemstones, readers, healers, all the normal stuff you see at spiritual expositions. But Victoria Smith has upped the game. In fact, she is a, an upgrade to such events. It's about empowering people, not just for sheer spiritual fair entertainment. You can find more about that event on September 21st and 22nd through me. Take a road trip. Come see me. Come hang out with me. I play music. Come out a day early. We hang. Get up. Go eat some breakfast. Go to the fair. Watch my presentation. We hang out. If you're in my proximity for this presentation and I can reach and touch you, you're in trouble. <laughs> I'm going to have a booth there, many booths of all kinds of amazing things, best-selling authors. You can also like and follow at, on Facebook, I'm assuming, Circle of Chi. That's Circle of Q-I, Chi, Q-I, Circle of Chi. To stay informed about new additions, workshops, announcements, and more. Again, I'm going to look in the room, offer up. What you think this title means, I don't believe. What is it that Keith doesn't believe? If you hit it, I'll give you some time. Let's see who just arrived. Pri, TM, Patsy, Robin. Uh, everyone who had just arrived, Carolyn, Renando, hi. I just announced that I would like to know your thoughts about Center of Light and Center of Light Radio. What is the difference? One is me talking with you directly. The other is interviewing guests. Either way, do you like the music? Do you like more music? Do you like less music? Do you like the videos that I post in my presentations to further my lessons? What is it you like more of or you like to see less of? What are subjects you would like me to talk about? Very, very important. Something that feeds your spirit. Let me know what that is. You can leave that here. Ah, we got our first victim. Believe means you don't know if you believe 
then uh, I got you. That's not it. Um, you're right, Marina. I don't believe in Satan. I get the idea of it and the, the mythological and the mm, metaphorical. And I'm not even going as far as to say there's not some creature out there that would claim he would be the, the end all of the bad shit. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. What does that mean? Kathy says, my mother's beautiful. Rick says, my mother's beautiful. My mom's beautiful. Sana, thank you all. So what would you like to see more of or less of via Center of Light? Hello, Vicky Benoit, my old childhood friend. I'm coming to Homa, I'm assuming, soon during the season of out of schoolness, having a 14-year-old son. I don't believe in death. Yeah, but that's not the one. They're all good. Everything you're going to tell me is going to be awesome. I'm going to go into a short pause. I'm going to come back, get down into the thick of, I don't believe. Over the course of the night, it may hit you. Ah, that's what Keith is insinuating. So don't just guess. It's just going to clog up the feed. When you feel something that you think is truly it, okay, it's just an added fun to the mix. Let's see who's chiming in, and then we go to commercial break. Commercial break. We're going to be right back after this commercial break from our sponsors. Heather Turpy's in the house. Kelly says, I love the music. I love your guests. I really like the exercise we did on awareness. Good girl. Good for you. Pri says, I second this, but I would like to see some more lives done on YouTube. Yes, the lives ended on YouTube, Pri, is because I violated one of the... I made I had a violation. It wasn't intentional. I w I'm shut down for 90 days, which is probably another two and a half weeks. But once it does, I will resume. And thank you for that. Rick says I don't believe in negative. I don't believe in negative as well. That's right. That but that's right. Uh, but that's not the one I'm looking for. As time goes by tonight, you will see. I'm gonna play some really cool music. Uh, so tonight, I'm not gonna, I don't have a structure. I'm just going to hang out and be me. And as if no one was here, and I'll have some downtime. And I'm going to have some downtime. And go get you a glass of wine. Go get you a shot of whatever. Get you a, a snack, some popcorn. Take yourself to a space of, you know, I'm going to have me some me time. And if there's no one there, if you're watching me on your phone, great, turn it up. If you're watching me on your stereo, turn it up, blow it up full screen. I'm going to have a blast tonight. Happy Mother's Day. What song do I want to play? Just now?
How important do you think it is for influential people such as yourselves to work together to create world peace and how much of an impact can you have? So obviously you can look around at all the crises we are facing, many of them self-inflicted and uh, especially the ones in Washington at the moment and you can think that it's hopeless and what can one person do and throughout history it's always been individuals working by themselves, working together, who brought about fundamental change. And for me, my favorite sort of scientific concept is the concept of critical mass. You remember from Physics 101, you know, you have to reach a certain level before um, something becomes self-sustaining. Well, in the same way, I think each one of us who contributes to that, um, work for peace, that work for um, alleviating suffering. Each one of us who does that is part of that critical mass. We don't know when we reach the tipping point, but we do know that each one of us is making a difference towards reaching that tipping point. And I have absolutely no doubt about that. I see it again and again. So that's why um, one thing I never feel as pessimistic, partly because I'm Greek and, you know, optimism is in our genes and in our DNA. <laughs> Remember Zorba the Greek? Uh, but also um, because I think that ultimately the forces of life and uh, goodness and compassion will prevail. I have no doubt about that. 
It's just a question of can we accelerate that movement and uh, reduce the suffering along the way. So in our lives, uh, what we, if we do not do what we cannot do is not a problem. But in our lives, if we do not do what we can do, we are a disaster. So we as a generation of people are in a unique space for the first time, for the very first time in the history of humanity. We are sitting in a place where we have the necessary resource, capability and technology to address every issue on the planet. You name it, we have a solution. But are we going to make it happen or not is a big question for we as a generation of people. I would like to see that we are not looked upon by future generations as a vain generation which had all the possibilities and didn't do it. I would like to see that they look upon as people who did everything that we could. So in this whole effort, the media is a significant piece, very significant piece. And it's wonderful that uh, just a segment is right now good news. We would like to see that create a world where there is nothing else to report than other than good things. But it is… Uh, I'm… I'm not a dreamy type, I'm very pragmatic about everything we do. But at the same time, I would like to say this. See, this happened in the year 1998. A certain uh, experts from United Nations visited southern India and they made a prediction. This part of southern India, which is called as Tamil Nadu, they made a prediction by 2025, sixty percent of Tamil Nadu will be a desert. I don't like predictions, you know, I don't like horror scopes. <laughs> because predictions are made on cold statistics. Predictions never take into account what is beating in individual human hearts. The aspirations of the people, statistics cannot uh, capture, you know. So I wanted to check for myself and I drove across this region in South India to find out if it's true then I found that it's not true because in my estimate, it would not go till 2025. It would be much sooner because in fifteen years' time, three perennial rivers had gone dry and water table had sunk from hundred and fifty feet to twelve hundred feet. So I was just thinking what to do. Then we made a barefoot calculation because the national aspiration in India is to have thirty-three percent green cover. But this state had only sixteen point five uh, percent green cow. So I made a barefoot calculation, if you plant one hundred and fourteen million trees in the next eight to ten years, in fifteen to twenty years you'll have thirty-three percent green cow and that's a real answer for maintaining the land. So I called uh, about three to four thousand volunteers and I told them we need to plant hundred and fourteen million trees. Their eyeballs rolled and said, Sadhguru, <laughs> Do you know what is hundred and fourteen million? Do you know how many zeros? They wouldn't be able… they would have had no time to get any sleep at all <laughs> No, uh, we're uh, working for people's enlightenment, you need a tree to sit under, you know <laughs> Actually, it's a very good place to have a nap. So, uh, <laughs> 114 million look like an impossible number in everybody's mind. So I just asked them, what is the population of this region? They said, uh, 62 million. I said, if all of us plant one tree today, nurture it for two years and plant one more, what's the number? You have the number right there. Everybody, every one of us is capable of planting one. All it takes is you have to convince everybody. In the last nine years now, eight and a half, nine years, I myself personally have planted only a little over hundred trees with my own hands, but today we've planted seventeen million trees. 
and uh, in the… in the whole of Asia, this is the only region where the green cover is actually going up. In eight years, the green cover has gone up by 7.2 percent, according to government statistics. According to Google, Google Maps, it's gone up over 10 percent. This… we've not given up our life to do this. This is just a small part of our life because to plant one tree, it doesn't take a life. And to nurture one tree, it doesn't take a life. It's just that we have to convince a large number of people to do it. And this is not been done by some environmentalists or scientists or government agencies. This is just done by ordinary people, simple people. School children have planted over two and a half million trees in the last uh, four years. And they're taking care of it because we don't allow anybody to plant more than two trees. You plant hundred and forget about it, that's not the point. You plant only two and you take care of it. And seventeen million living trees has happened just on the side. This is not our main job, it's just one small thing. Why I'm saying this is the media pitched in big time. The local media, when I spoke to the people and they heard what I said, I went to the local farmers and told them you have to convert ten percent of your land into trees, more food should come out of trees. They said, what is this all about? They don't know what is global warming, climatic problems, they're just struggling for day-to-day -day life. So I made them sit under a tree and just made them understand, see what you exhale, the tree is inhaling right now. What the tree exhales, you're inhaling right now. This is a relationship that you can't break. You can live without anybody but not without a tree. That's definitely going in the good news section, that's no. a lot of trees. I want to particularly congratulate the media because the media took it up in a big way. They saw this as a possibility and took it up and across the place, today we have over thirteen hundred nurseries in the state, you know plant nurseries, where if any tree that we planted dries up or dies, within fifteen days it will be replaced by the volunteers in the area. Uh, but this happened because media cooperated really good. If that didn't happen, we wouldn't have reached the number of people that we reached, we couldn't have inspired the number of people we inspired and so many people wouldn't have taken it up. Welcome back to Center of Light. It is almost nine o'clock. My screen is not going to go dark. It's not. It's not. I found it. And I know for a fact it's my mother who led me to the solution. I know this. Kate, this, I know this. I've had a lots of magic surrounding my mother since she passed. I have. I've been dealing with this for since I got this TV. And it wasn't the TV. <laughs> my mother gave me the solution, which was my computer. Check this out. This is what I discovered. At 9 o'clock every night, my TV goes dark. Night light settings, screen emit blue light filter, blah, blah, blah. Turn off now. <laughs> I turned that son of a bitch off. In the song by Lavender Soul that I played for the commercial break, at the end of the song, Stormy, the lady singing, oh my God, her, the tonality of her voice is just redonkulously great, said, I am the door. You have not tried. Never again taking chances, open the door and walk inside. So for those who were here earlier when I was playing this game about if you name it right, I still want to offer that opportunity to you. Knowing my humor, 
with my banners, these splash banners like what I just showed you. <clears throat> I don't believe, but yet there's a doorway. Here's your last chance. I'll give you this much. The first person that populates my feed. It's a word that consists of three letters. Three letters. Three. Three letters. Three letters. Let's see who's going to be the first. I'm curious. I'm having fun tonight. It's Mother's Day. I'm living in my mother. My mother was a beautiful lady. She taught me all I needed, all that was integral to um, the unfoldment of where I claim is a good place, at least in my life today. Curious to see who populates. I don't believe is the game. I don't believe. And I'm waiting because it's about a 20-second lag. Good one, Carolyn. I don't believe in sin, but that's not the one. I'm going to give it a few more minutes, another minute. Welcome, everyone, to Center of Light. I am Keith Anthony Blanchard. Yah. I'm trying to get my sign language down. When I was a kid, I knew it fluently. Yah na va. The sound of the heart, yah. The sound of the mind, na. The balanced mind. And backbone is va. Yana va. Another good one. No, I do believe in me, Kathy, but good attempt, though. It's three letters. Wow. I'm going to milk this for what it's worth. <laughs> it's ironic. It's not what you think. It is. It's not what you think. All right. I'm going to wait for one more post, and then I'm going to come off it. I'm sending the vibes, y'all. I'm sending the vibes. <laughs> Rick, I love Rick's answer the best. Rick, I'm a, if you, that, that's correct, sir. Ish. You're the closest one so far. And it's three letters. Yanavai, he says, Y-N-V. I love it. All right. Kelly, now you're dancing on Rick's tails. In fact, you are equally as close to Rick. Because what you said is the it. And the it is, I don't believe in God. I don't. <laughs> I simply don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. And people's minds are going, what can this possibly mean? I don't believe in God. And I'm going to let you sit with that for a second. <laughs> On purpose. Center of Light Federation. This presentation is never to offend nor frighten, but to awaken. Lots of people are scared. They won't tell you, but they are scared. This is the purpose of my work, is to empower. I am a soul made of light here on this earth to use my God-given abilities, the God I don't believe in, <laughs> to bring about global unity and peace. I don't believe in God. I'll tell you why. shortly what is in the door lavender soul my spiritual band and the song before break talked about i am the door you have not tried never again taking chances the god i don't believe in open your heart and walk inside Are you getting it yet? Maybe you don't. This might clarify some things.
I don't believe in God. Why? Because I don't rely on something that I have no knowing about. As Kelly so poetically said, yes, Linda, correct, correct. Linda says we are God. So what? at least my point is, is that I don't believe in God. I don't believe in something I don't know. I am open to the possibility of something I don't know. But I don't just base the principle and the well-being on my life about something I'm ignorant of. What I mean by I don't believe in God is I know God. So I am taking what I believe in, which can be beneficial as an excuse, a crutch, or leverage to take you to a place of knowing. I don't believe in God. I don't. The Buddhists don't believe in God. Why? Because they use the rest of their life to get to a space of knowing God. Belief is not enough. It's enough, and you can live peacefully and happily with your family and children. But for those who want a little more of God smack, belief is not enough. They venture into that cave I spoke about earlier. And all they want is the manna of the divine. They don't come out of the cave. They may stretch and yawn and walk about to stretch their legs or whatever it is. An asp a true spiritual aspirant like Jesus, like Buddha, like many other divine beings have done. They're serious. They're not interested in entertaining God or the idea of it. They want it. They want to amalgamate and become so familiar with it that it takes full control of every fiber of their being. Open the door and walk inside. And when you do, like the Taj Mahal, which is representative of India, and India is the motherland, Happy Mother's Day, y'all. When you walk through the door, the stargate of your heart, to the place of love, you will no longer believe in God either. You will know it. There's no point in believing in something you don't know. And you begin to integrate that software when you upgrade... <laughs> The computer, you know as your meat suit, the hardware, has a new input. Input. When you in, the divine puts itself into your mainframe and you become a part of the conscious divine matrix. Happy Mother's Day. Do you understand? It's not just about your mama or your mommy or ma or mom. It is. Because your mother is congruent with the divine feminine energy. And it requires us to open the door, as Laver de Soul says, and walk inside. I am the door you have not tried. What do you think is going to be in that door? Scares the living shit out of many people. Rightfully, it should. For many reasons. But under two shelters, under two umbrellas, two categories. The good and the bad. The good scares you because if you are such a one, most of your life, you've just been scared shitless your whole life. Every time something good happens, you're excited and you want the good. 
but you scared shitless because every time before that, every time something good happened to you, the other shoe dropped or something always happens and rips it from your heart. And the bad scares you because you know you have to go through the hell fire to get into the divine fire. There is no other way. I am sorry. Your believing in God is beautiful. It's intentful. It is culture. It is tradition. But it's also comfortable. So if you want to become a divine adult as we have grown, humanity has grown from infancy. Now we're in our adolescence, but out the adolescence. We're 18 years old, heading towards 21. Do you hear me? Listen to me. We've been adolescent for a long time, and the 60s opened that door. The 60s opened that door I just showed you. The late 60s, the whole 60s movement, actually. The 70s. The 80s came out. These sons of bitches want to headbang. They want to rebel. They want anarchy. They, the guys dress like women. The rock. The pounding. The volume. We got something to say and you're going to listen. And the volume's going to get loud. And the 90s kind of to dovetail into the double aughts of the 2000s. And now we find ourselves at 2020 that passed just like that. I remember the 90s like it was last week. It's changing. It's changing so fast. You need to get on board to, keep, to barely keep up. That doorway, what you're going to find in there, can potentially scare the crap out of you. But that's what you want. You want the crap out of you. Do you not? I do. I don't mind soiling my britches. As I take every opportunity to cross all the bridges. That being said, I want to read you something. I've been reading this a lot lately. It's, it's on point. Perspective is very valuable. It's a very valuable tool right now. It is an aspect of self-awareness. The presentation I did the other night was one of my finest, if I may say so myself. Perspective. Everyone should take the research journey upon themselves. Not only in books or YouTube or Google or any of that. The research journey. Everyone should take the research journey upon themselves of any and all necessary to help anchor the light of unity, expanding humanity. Capital three letters. It is crucial to question everything in today's world. There is a larger agenda at work and our inquiry must be diligent. I have followed many rabbits into many holes and more often than not, all I have ended up with was a handful of disgusting rabbit shit. There comes a time when what we were and are still being taught, programmed, television programs and the like, needs a pulled back perspective. In so doing, we can honestly see both polarities at work. When one develops true sight, then one can have a powerful impact for the highest good. These are not only my findings in my ongoing blissful research for the absolute soul loot truth. They are also my experiences with divine God men avatars. I want to read something to you. Let me look at the room. Rick says, well, I would never say I don't believe in God freely. I know we have free will, but God is my crypto spirit. Dig it. Love it. Rick loves God's mic. What's up, Augie? Lynn? Shasha? Linda? 
Moving forward, uh, Karen Lenando says self. Augie says perspective and discernment, not judgment. Total two different things. We can always see, but it's also how we look. What, how are we looking at it? What is it we're looking at? And what do we think we're looking at? It's all intention. And it can muddy up the beauty real quick. Nori Love says no formal charge. Link for the love gifts. Normal, uh, Nori is talking about our retreat. There are no formal charge. Link for love gifts will be available. For, so for Nori Love and I's Forgiveness Freedom Retreat next Sunday night, Sunday, 5 to 9 for Eastern Time, 4 to 8 for Central Time. Uh, there's no formal charge, but it's basically a love offering. Look through this forum's feed, and you will find all the information Nori has posted, or you can contact me. If you're interested in healing all the wounds that you don't even know possibly exist in you, your life will get more magnanimous, magnanimity, quick. Check that out. I want to read something to you from my book, For the Love of God, A Spiritual Journey, because that doorway that this image represents. I was a young man. I had a dream for, with a divine man, that man behind me, and said, Keith, come to India. I said, how? He says, Keith, 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 Keith. Stop it. Be willing to come to India, and I will provide the doorway. Three weeks later, I get a phone call from a lady I never met. Says, I heard you want to go to India. I said, yes, ma'am. She says, I'm a flight attendant. Can I give you a round trip ticket? The doorway. This is the doorway. What will you find in the doorway? Everything you want, have always wanted, but always out of reach. It's just like right out of your reach. I can almost get it. And it gets ripped away from you and you're scared. You want to invest. You want to trust, but you're scared. Jump, my friend, jump. And everything you don't want to look at is in that door. Both halves. But when you understand that you are the whole coin, wow. now have the power of light and the wisdom of dark at my disposal to wield my entire life. That's the door. That is the divine door. I had a glimpse of that divine door years ago when I was in India to see that holy man. I'm just going to read you this excerpt from a chapter called Swinging Back and Forth. Today feels about expansion. Why am I up so early? I, get, I got up at 4.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, every morning, every morning to go see God. Today is about expansion. Why am I up so early? I got up extra early beyond 4 o'clock. Stretching my arms out and letting out a big yawn. After I make my way over to the bathroom for a quick groom, I hit the door running. And then I say to myself, where am I run? Why am I running down the street and where am I going? Because I had no clue. I just started running. It seems my feet know, but I don't. After I run down the road for a bit, I hear, Saidam, why are you running so fast and where are you going? Ask one of two men sitting on the curb. And I respond, I have no clue, feeling somewhat lost in a dream. And one of the two men says, we know. And I say, how do these people seem to know everything? I lost my notes. One second. He says, come, sit here. Okay. Why are you both here and what's going on inside that room? I ask panting from running. <sighs> we are here for super baritum. That will happen in there says both of them together. And I said, Super Bartim, yes, because I was told about it. And if God wanted me to experience it, 
I would be able to experience God through the door of Superbartum. I was told by someone else that Baba would lead me here if I asked. And I said, is this a cool experience? <laughs> and one of them says, very cool. Your journey to the ashram in India would not be complete unless you came to this. And I say, very cool. Your, uh, very soon, he says, another one, the other one says, very soon people will begin to flood the streets going into Kuwant Hall. You came at the right time. Sidam says the first man. And I ask, how long do we have to wait before we go inside? We will wait for about an hour or so, says the first man. I say, do you mind if I lean against the wall and get a little shut eye? I ask out of respect. Sidam, what? Asked the second man, confused. <laughs> and I say, would you mind if I got some rest until it's time to go inside? I say, realizing they don't understand my lingo. No, go ahead, get your rest. An hour later. Sidam, you might want to wake up now. People are starting to get in line. It won't be long before we go inside Superbaratum, says the first man. Wiping my eyes, I stand up and brush the dirt from my derriere. <laughs> Everyone come inside. This way. Shh. No talking. And don't look at the women. You will sit on one side while they sit on the other. No distraction, says the man, who just opened the door to let us in. In single file line, about 30 men begin to pile into the small room. Taking my seat, I begin to look around. Whoa. I'm in this little bitty room, and I'm freaking out. This is amazing, not believing what I am seeing and feeling. Not only am I fortunate to experience Sai Baba in the ashram, I am blessed to experience the Godhead temple in physical form, one of the most holiest places on this earth. Again, this is where words only soil the sacred. Like I just said. Everything in this temple is the holiest of holy and has been seen by a few. So in this moment, I'm feeling like a very blessed man. Inside this room, there are act there's an actual chariot of a real life statue of a beautiful white horse. There are also large pictures of Krishna, Arjuna, Baba of Shirdi, Sathya Sai Baba that don the walls. Fragrant, fragrant flowers are everywhere. There is no place more sacred than this on the face of this earth. At least that's what I was experiencing in that moment. In here, the divine energy is so apparent and visible that it actually hurts to look at anything when I am not in no thought mode. And it seems the only way I can see anything clearly is when I intend to go within and humble myself. Musicians begin to play and everyone begins to sing. Since I don't know the words or what's going on, I'll wait to learn the melody and hum on the next round. After about 15 minutes of music, the room becomes still. Filled with a silence I've never experienced in my life. Bang, bang, bang sounds the gold bell and 35,000 people in Kuwant Hall begin to chant Om 21 times. This is where that door for me began to open. Oh my God, what is happening? It feels like the breath of God is moving through me as this little room and my heart began to resonate like a tuning fork. I can't seem to describe it, except that I hear this loud buzzing sound and see bright light. But there's something else 
and I have no idea what it is. My physical body seems to be disappearing, like it's melting away, revealing only my essence. I am in such a state of awe and humility that I can feel my connection to the entire universe. And now that there is no distortion in me, I can see everything in this room perfectly. When the last of the 21 ohms are chanted, it's over and just like that. They are ushering everyone out. Shh, no talking, says the man who opened the door. I can't begin to describe I can't begin to describe what happened in there. In fact, the only thoughts I'm having I'm logging into my tape recorder. But I can tell you that I am feeling blissful and overwhelmed. That's the door. Do you want to move through the door of your life? Rick goes back to Yanava. It's the back work that makes it possible leading by example. Yes, Rick. Raw and real, Rick. Nori says, he who has eyes. Callan Renando says, what would I do with the castle? <laughs> Going to be right back. Angel of love. We all need that on Mother's Day. We need that mother, divine bosom. To suckle the divine tea so we can all drink of the milk of paradise. That's what always comes from my heart when I do these presentations. It's my life's work. Stick around.
said goodbye and turned into a dove. As I watched, she floated through the room. And as I cried, she was there. Welcome back to Sooner of Light, all my friends. That last song is just scrum delicious to me. Tonight we're speaking about I don't believe. What don't I believe? We talked about it throughout the midway presentation. I don't believe in God. It's a dangerous place. But what I do is I use my life, my time, my intention, my will to go beyond what could be a great catalyst of believing in God to actually having an experience. Believing in God can create comfort and solace. Wow. New meme coming soon. Belief in God creates comfort and solace. Knowing God creates ecstasy. That's hitting me. Belief in God creates comfort and solace. Knowing God can only create ecstasy. I don't believe in God. It goes nowhere. It goes this far, maybe a little bit, but there's a wall. And that wall is called ignorance and laziness and a lack of n not having passion and the desire to stretch the balloon, the door, to open the door I'm preaching to the choir the things that fire me up that I said I was going to speak about earlier and I'm going to give you a quick overview before I go into vessel mode see because when I go into vessel mode you go into vessel mode we're one and the same there's no way you cannot I just happen to be the speaker you just happen to be the hearer the listener the things that get me going as far as conversational topics, and we have covered these, and I've been doing this live for about two and a half years, three years, three years, sounds fair. The things I brought through this platform, Center of Light. Aliens, I love the shit out of some aliens. They're everywhere. I hung out with one for four and a half years personally. They're everywhere. You don't have to believe in it. Don't believe in it. Know it. I know it. I absolutely know it to my bones. I've been on starships. I've been. I befriended an alien-human hybrid. And it's okay. You know, what? I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just speaking for me. They're there. Not only they're there. They're here. They're you. There's some of us moving around. Some of us are inbred. We don't. We, we just don't know. 
but it is a cosmic gumbo on this earth. That's a fact. I love talking about God. The one I don't believe in, but the one I know. And the one I know happens to look like me. Do you know that God for yourself? Not the one that looks like me, but the one that looks like you. Because every day, every day, conscious or not, my friend, you are sitting on your throne. And I don't mean in the bathroom. You are sit on your king, you're sitting on your kingdom or your queendom throne every day, governing your lair, governing your people. How is your world? How is your kingdom, queendom? I'm not judging. If it's awesome, awesome. Keep doing it. And if it's not awesome, what are you getting from it? So your reality would change when you change your dynamic from why is this happening to me to what can I learn from this? Then you move up to a conscious king or conscious queen sitting on your conscious throne commanding using your ya, your heart, your will, your God center that you are at your center, at your essence, because the basis of all reality, everything that is natural is God. Everything that is natural is God. God is the nature of all things. That being said, what are you experiencing between the nature of yourself, soul, even beyond the soul, spirit, which you are, in your outer world, what are you experiencing? Because all that you believe and all that you think is happening or is not happening is filtering that as you endeavor to walk through the doorway of all possibility. That is the, what I just showed you is called the doorway of all possibility. And you are always walking in the door of always all possibility. But are you doing it consciously and commanding and controlling? And I don't mean controlling. I mean controlling your life by being soft. This is mostly of what my life work is about. And that does tie into world peace and global unity. Empowerment. Also, for the fun of it with my friends, and I have to learn to control, believe it or not, I have to learn to control myself about conspiracy theory. Not because the conspiracy theories that I don't believe in, the ones that I know. Because as I said earlier, I have followed many rabbits into many rabbit holes. And all I have often, more so than not, ended up with was a hand of disgusting rabbit shit. That rabbit shit is real. It's not, well, Keith, water the weed or water the plant. You can focus on, trust me, I understand that. I can focus on this flower planted in my garden all I want because that's my focus, not the weeds, but the flower. But there can come a time when the weeds will take over and the very flower that you are steadfast focusing at, giving it your 100% attention, can be choked out by those very weeds because we have not given credence, or at least not acknowledgement of credence, but at least a glance at the things that are suffocating the potential of our own Eden. You feel me? It's not always about focusing on the good, 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 because the bad focus can be good, provided we understand that it's imparting wisdom to us. Because do you want to have your garden while you're focusing on your only flower being choked out and stifled by the weeds? The weeds need attention as well. They need to be pulled. Nori and I's forgiveness freedom retreat is that. Are you willing to go through hell fire to experience your divine fire? Jesus led the way. If you're a Christian, you have to walk in the same direction through your hell to get to your heaven. There is no other way. There is no other way. Do you believe comfort and solace or do you know Bliss and ecstasy. 
I also love talking about, like I said, conspiracy theory. There's lots of bad shit happening in this world. You don't want to know, but you need to know. I will talk it, about it with you one-on-one. -on -one. Not that you don't know enough already. And it's not about watering the weed or watering the plant. Why would you want to divulge this to someone to create this disgust? Well, maybe it's the very disgust that needs to be elevated through to create a burst of light. Because awareness is light in the light of awareness. The atrocities go beyond what you ever want to understand or hear. And it, a lot of it involves children being eaten and being sacrificed and harvested for organs. Are you listening to me? I don't like it either. You don't have to like it. God damn it, you don't have to like it. This motherfucker don't like it either. Children are being harvested for organs and food. This is the world you have submerged yourself in. Do we understand each other now? The darkness of the world is purposeful. It's all part of the divine play, the divine lila, the divine game, the game of life. The world is important. What is more important than the world, believe it or not, sounds selfish, is you. Is your involvement in the world is what makes the world have any importance whatsoever. Because without you, you will never hear the tree fall in the forest. Forrest Gump, run. Run to your purpose. Run to your reason. Run to being a contributor to that which brings peace in this world. It's not about going to church on Sunday. Oh, let me bring some, or your mosque or your synagogue. And that's beautiful. I am not belittling that or desecrating that. I am not. But that's not enough. Belief in the mosque and the church is not enough. We have to take action. Dear Lord, we need to take action. I love talking about astral travel, out-of-body experiences. It's real. It's all real. Everything I talk about, share, involves my soul. It involves my passion and my sincerity. Let me look at the room, and I'm going to go into vessel mode tonight. We're speaking about... I am doing my best not to believe in anything. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Satan. I've experienced some satanic moments. Doesn't mean it's real. It means I believed in it. <laughs> Sharon Turco, hi. Timothy Johnson, hi, brother. Uh, Renee, Ames. Moving down. Kelly Curtis, hi, beautiful. She sends me her, uh, her parrot birds. Uh, Kelly is a very uh, well lover of the avian species, and I love it for her. She's gorgeous with it. My brother Augie says, most often the difference between believing and knowing is an experience. We all have experiences, but also often try to explain it away. Yes, sir. And I understand we want to explain it away. It's part of the logical, rational mind, and it does serve a beneficial purpose. But boy, when it engages and becomes automatic and wants to take over the conversation that's when things go awry and lost so tonight we're talking about i don't believe i don't believe in god i don't want to believe in anything i want to experience it not that i'm pushing the disbelief envelope you tell me you saw something magnanimous under a rock yesterday when you were jogging down the road i'm not going to go look because i don't believe you and want to disprove you I'm going to go because I want some of the joy and the bang bang you got from it as to why you so jumping up and down, sweating, telling me about it. That's where I'm at. As far as the Satan stuff, I have experienced in nighttime's ex dreamscape things of such an amazing dark nature until I learned. When I was Catholic growing up, the devil would come. Literally, in an experience that I was so hyper-conscious, I would sweat buckshot as I would wake up, freaking out, not wanting to go back to sleep. Now, if, very far and few between, dark entities try to come to me and challenge me, I'm like, 
you better go somewhere else because I'm about to obliterate you with light into non-existence. <laughs> they leave me alone. In fact, if one of them is near me, I will. I have the conscious awareness about me to know my body is on a bed and I will grab them around the neck and pull them into my fold and I will start kissing them on the head and say, you knucklehead, I love you. They want no part of that. They don't. So when we can bring this conscious awareness from this dimension and that conscious awareness <coughs> from that dimension and begin to bring them together, a third awareness begins to happen. What is that awareness? It's at least the beginning of the birth of the Christ within yourself. Because now you're functioning on multiple dimensional levels. This is what spiritual liberation is about. Always has been, is now, and will forever be. When you be that forever, which is multi-dimensionally aware, you have to go through hell to understand the consciousness of heaven. There is no other way. You can do it in the Christian movement. You can do it in the Buddhist faith, the Muslim faith, whatever faith. Faith meaning that which is beautiful and gorgeous as to why you have a belief in something. But now you realize that your belief does not feed your spirit anymore. You want to experience. When you move through that divine door, your mother's day will truly happen for you, whether you are male or female. It is the birth of the cosmic mother. And guess what? Guess what? The same way you came onto this plane, through the womb of your mother, you can only go back through the womb of your mother you see on your act on your entry here it's called intercourse <laughs> on your exit it's called inner course Happy Mother's Day, all of you, all, all. It reverberates throughout the universe, whether you know it or not. There's a vibratory ambiance, a signature vibration, at least for your planet and your culture. But your culture is so strong, you create such a vibratory ambiance, a ripple. And all the doors are open, feeling the Happy Mother's Day energy, phenomena, reality, experience, which can be yours if you decide to put down all those spiritual chores. It's simple. Look at all the work, the stress and the strain, struggle and pain, and simply put it aside and move inside of that doorway which belongs to you. In fact, it is you. It's your very nature. Happy Mother's Day. Spirit imparts to you, through the heart, to you. There's not really much Spirit wants to divulge to you in this way. Much has been said on this fine, glorious, royal, majestic evening. You want proof? I'll give it to you. Close your eyes for 30 seconds. Just close your eyes. Breathe fully, let go, breathe in again fully, let go, and breathe in again fully, and let go. Keep your eyes closed, 
and let your mother pop into your third eye. Alive or not, let her pop into your eye lively. How do you feel? Do you see that image as a doorway connecting you to motherhood all across the world? Of course you do. Spiritual lesson is over. Wow. Short and to the point. It did a number on me. Happy Mother's Day. All you mothers. <laughs> Center of Light Radio. Center of Light TV. That is Mimi. And I love you, you. Spread the word. We got to get our business going. We got to get our busy going. The world needs it. Be happy for no reason. Live in peace. Don't believe in God. Become an atheist. Don't believe in God. Know God. Move into knowing. Knowing it. Experiencing it. But you have to want it. You have to want it. You have to live it. You have to breathe it. You don't breathe. You die. Without God, you don't exist. <laughs>